Hi everyone and welcome to Hobby World. I was just wondering what would happen if I picked up a tabletop miniature, scaled it up to full size and 3D printed it. As we all know, the best and only way to answer a question like this is to test it in real life and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I have found the perfect model for this project, Drasa the Assassin from Dungeon Pinups. So why don't we just get started with this project right away. Before we can proceed we need to figure out which scale factor I am going to use for this model. So I have just imported into my slicing software which is Secura and when I mark the model like this we can see that it's 82mm tall. I want the model to be 175cm tall or around that. So if we just input that into the software and hit enter we will see how the model will end up looking compared to the CR10 Max print bed. This is a really, really large model, as we can clearly see. The scale factor is 2126%, uh, and as I just like clean numbers, I'm just going to change that to 2150% and hit enter. Now the model will be around 177 cm tall, which seems really appropriate for a model like this. So I'm going to use that. I have just imported the model of Drasa into a piece of software called MeshMixer. I use this software to split up a 3D model into lesser pieces so it will fit on the print bed of my 3D printers. I am going to 3D print Drasa here on a CR10 Max and a CR10 S Pro so I made sure that all of these pieces will fit on those two printers. As you can see I have already split up the model into several lesser pieces and they are ready to be ex exported so I can open them up in my slicer and start 3D printing all of the parts. I'm going to do a video tutorial at a later time where I show how I did this. I'm currently uh, printing two parts for the pinup girl and as you can see here I have a very heavy infill. This is because this is one of the uh, feet and uh, this is going together with the other feet to uh, carry the entire weight of the model. The infill I have printed the rest of the model in is more like this, so a very low infill. This increases the uh, print time and it also makes the model much lighter. And as the model is so large, uh, I simply need to have a small infill in all of the top parts or else it will simply collapse under its own weight. So all of these parts with the weapon and sword and so on, they, they have practically no weight, they're very, very uh, light. This is going to be a real nice project. <laughs> Those actually look just a bit like balloons, but uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how they'll look when I add the, uh, the rest of the model. This is printed using 5% infill. It's really impressive watching a printer like this work. Uh, large, large print here. Uh, the part from the knee and down, and uh, so far it's been printing for 48 hours on this part. This is the last of the very large pieces. So I only need to print a single piece more than I have all of the things ready for the uh, pinup girl, which I have uh, placed up here. Here you can see her, the top part down to the hips, then the uh, thighs and some of the hands, cape. I have a small error on the print here, but I'm just going to see what I can do about that to fix it. It happened when I shifted materials during the print and then it just simply cracked. I think that's because uh, this PLA material and this one down here might have had some different uh, properties. So uh, that might have caused the crack and uh, I'm pretty sure I can fix that. So I'm not worrying about it. But uh, here she is, almost all of the parts. This was an extremely large print and it has taken so long. The CR10 Max is the printer that made this possible. Without that printer this would have been a quite impossible project. So um, this is a really great and a great printer. It has worked uh, almost flawlessly. I've had uh, very few fails on it. So I'm very happy about this one. This is an absolutely insane project I've started here. 
This is a full-sized 3D printed pin-up girl fantasy edition with swords and everything. And as you can see, there are lots and lots of parts laying around here on the table. And not only are there a lot of parts, they are also really big. So this is going to be an incredible project to finish. And I'm really looking forward to the painting part where I can try to paint up this full-sized model just like it was a miniature, just in full size. I have uh, glued all of the parts together with the Gorilla Glue and the Super Glue and it seems to create a really strong bond. But just to be on the safe side, I have decided to uh, PLA weld all of the gaps that's not visible. So up here for example, where the head is going to be placed, the head is going on top like this. I'm going to PLA weld the uh, gaps between here and there and the same on the bottom of it just to increase the strength. And I'm also going to use PLA welding here on the sides. And then I'm going to glue the last parts on because they don't require that much strength. And that's simply just to increase the strength because I've just tried to lift this and it's just like the alien egg. It's, it's actually beginning to get really heavy and I would just hate if it broke due to, uh, due to uh, too much stress on the uh, glued surfaces. So PLA welding. And, uh, it's actually beginning to look really nice. I have had the model assembled like this before when I just uh, put it on display to see how it would look. But uh, I have never assembled the feet, hips and legs and uh, especially those parts will require this PLA welding as an extra security. So I'm both going to glue them with Gorilla Glue, Super Glue in all of the gaps and then uh, PLA welding if it's uh, hidden surfaces. And uh, of course, after all of this is done, I'm going to add some filler and sand it all down. I'm going to add some uh, UV resin to uh, smoothen all of the surfaces. You can see it's very visible up here that I have all of these uh, layer lines, but they can be removed using a UV resin and I've had a very nice experience with that. With that. So, let's go on, let's get uh, some PLA welding done. And uh, when doing something like that, remember to wear a mask, it will create some uh, pretty nasty fumes.
Finally, I have filled up all of the gaps in the pinup girl and she's standing here in front of me in all her glory. And this is indeed a magnificent model. This is actually quite incredible how this model uh, looks. I am very impressed about it and I am looking very much forward to painting it. If we take a closer look at the model, we can see that I have added the filler in all of these sections. I have added it everywhere where I have a couple of pieces connecting and thereby creating a gap that needed to be filled so I could create a smooth surface on top of it. And uh, this filler is normally used for drywalls and it's very easy to sand it down. I simply needed it to uh, fill up all of the gaps. When this is sanded down, because I need to sand it down, as you can see, it has created a rough texture here, and you can also hear it when I do this with my hand. It needs to be sanded down, and I, especially in all of these patterns in here, I need to remove it. When all of this is done, I will apply a layer of uh, resin to both remove the small um, scratching I'm doing with the sandpaper, and also remove the layer lines from the model. And um, my time frame for this is that all of this is dry now so i'm going to sand all of this model down that's going to take quite a while but i expect to do it during uh, today and uh, when that's done i need to add the uv resin and that's probably going to take a long time too i'm going to do it on uh, both sides of the model so i'm going to start with one side put it up on a table and then uh, add the uv resin and when that's uh, cured and I'm satisfied with the result on one side, I'm going to turn it around, do the same thing on the other side and after that I'll have to sand it all down once more. So uh, that's pretty time consuming but it will end up looking really nice and this is probably the most important step in all of the process or all of the models work. It's this step, getting this surface absolutely perfect so I can paint it up and get a completely clean finish. I have used so much time on this model already, so if I do not do it right, I'll simply regret it later. So I'm going to take, and it's a great idea, taking all the time this needs to get it absolutely right. I have finally finished sanding down this impressive model, and to be quite honest, sanding down isn't exactly the part of the uh, build I like the most. So um, now it's complete and I need to apply uh, UV resin on top of the entire model to remove all of the uh, layer lines. So I'll have an impressively clean smooth finish. So when I prime it, it will look completely sharp and I'll have a nice layer to apply the paint on. So it will look as perfect as possible. So um, I still need to attach all of the weapons. As you can see here is uh, a part where one of the weapon goes. And I have them over here, this is these three parts. They have also been sanded down and uh, prepared. And I still need to smoothen those out using this layer of UV resin. But I have decided to attach the weapons after I have applied the UV resin to both the front and the back of this impressive model. And the reason for that is I am pretty sure that if I attach the weapon here, for example, it would uh, break if I put the model on the table like I've done here. Uh, I don't think they're strong enough to hold the model and I need to have the model placed on the table like this to uh, make the, the UV resin process when I apply this uh, almost this liquid uh, stuff on top of the model. So I'm going to apply that on the front then turn it around and apply it on the back. Then I'm going to uh, put the model so it's uh, standing and then I'm going to attach the weapons and uh, that will of course create some uh, gaps and some uh, small places that hasn't been smoothed out uh, around the assemblies but uh, then I can fix those when the model is standing that would be far easier so um, basically I'm going to uh, apply this human resin coat now and that's probably going to take a lot of time so um, it's just uh, I just have to get to it I have just found all of the stuff I need to uh, make a UV resin coat for this model. And the reason to apply a UV resin coat is to remove layer lines like these and uh, make all of the imperfections caused by the 3D printing process and the assembling look as uh, tiny or invisible as possible. So uh, basically it's all about 
getting a perfect finish on the model so it's ready for painting. And to make this UV coat, I uh, use some uh, basic uh, baby powder, some UV resin, and a container to mix it all in, where I use a brush of an appropriate size. That depends a bit on your own project, which size you choose. I also use a UV lamp to cure the stuff, and uh, as powerful as you can get it, because it will cure it faster. And then, of course, some uh, gloves to uh, protect your fingers from getting this stuff on them. And I also use a mask that will protect my eyes from the UV light. The process is actually pretty simple. You uh, mix the baby powder and the UV resin in this container until it has the right consistency and uh, it is uh, the correct thickness. And how thick it needs to be, well that basically depends a bit about how you prefer to work with it and also a bit on the project itself. For example, if we take a look on top of this head, you can see this isn't a very nice 3D printed finish. This is because this was uh, placed upwards and I printed in a rather uh, high, uh, rather large layer height, so it got this um, pretty rough finish. So up here I will use a rather thick coat as this will hide all of these imperfections. Where if we take a look at one of the uh, armor plates on the shoulder here, this is actually pretty smooth from the beginning, so it won't require a thicker layer of the UV resin. When applying this stuff, I uh, mix a container full, apply it to an area of the model. I usually just pick an area. It could be this armor piece up here, and then I apply the UV resin to all of this armor piece, pick up the UV lamp and uh, illuminate it so it will harden up and, uh, and uh, become... Uh, uh, yeah, it, it will harden up and uh, then when I have completed this section, I will proceed to the next part and then I'll take all of the model in small sections uh, a bit at a time until I have completed everything on the model because all of the model basically needs to get this coating. So um, it's a lot of, uh, it's pretty time consuming and uh, luckily it's the final step before actually painting it up, applying the primer and painting the model up, which I find really entertaining. So um, now I just need to get this finished. The UV coat has been added and it uh, took a rather long time. It actually took around half a work day or something like that. Uh, much longer than I had expected. Uh, but uh, it looks really well. I might have to sand it all down when uh, I am completely sure that this is uh, dry. So uh, I'm going to uh, position this model back on its feet. And uh, when it's back on the feet I am going to uh, place a UV lamp so it can uh, cure it and uh, then just leave it to dry for, for half an hour or so on uh, both sides because it's still a bit sticky. But uh, it turned out really well, but I'm, as I said before, if we just take a look at the details down here, it, uh, it feels smooth, I'm not going to touch it now without uh, gloves on, but it feels smooth, but uh, you can see there are these small imperfections. So I'll have to sand it down once more, but when that's done, then I'm ready to add the primer and then, uh, then the model should look as I want it to. So uh, let's try to do that and see what happens. It looks absolutely amazing. It's almost magical. Just take a look at this model. This is a 3D printed full-size pinup girl I've been working on and I've just applied a coat of UV resin on top of the entire model to smoothen out the surface so I can prime her and paint her up and get a really neat finish. And just take a look at this. All of these colors and reflections coming from the UV lamp, which is curing her right now, this looks 
absolutely amazing. This is basically just as close to magic as it can get. So I just wanted to uh, share this short video with you all because this will be the only last and only time I am seeing her in this kind of light. So uh, I just thought that it was a special moment. Well, that's it. The model is primed and the weapons are attached. In the next episode, I'm going to paint this magnificent model. If you liked the video and found the content interesting, please consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, comments are always appreciated. Feedback, questions, everything goes, so just ask away. And thank you all for watching.